This was always so much more than just a dollhouse. So last year, I really started to look back on my childhood and I realized that there was this dark illuminating cloud over it. And back in 2009, when I was 10 years old and I got my first American Girl doll, I just remember that the conversations we have today around children and development and how children play with their toys, it wasn't really happening. Boys playing with dolls was definitely seen as a very taboo thing and was very still hush-hush, whereas now it's a little more open and accepted that a child, whatever gender they may be, plays with whatever they want. And as an adult, I definitely felt like there was a lot of healing that needed to be done from this. So when I started to really unpack that, I realized that I didn't just need a new American Girl doll. I needed to have a physical representation of having that acceptance standing right in front of me and my American Girl doll all having entirely new stories that reflected a healed version of my inner child. Through this entire process, there has definitely been a sense of empowerment, being able to look into really making sure that every element of my American Girl doll house was 110% me and the choices that I wanted for my American Girl dolls in this day and age. I wanted every aspect of this dollhouse to be a reflection of myself and I found so much power in that and it really helped me to heal from my childhood. So without further ado, let me show you guys my American Girl doll house. So last December, I looked at my good dear friend Robbie and I said, I think that now that I'm starting the doll studio by Chris, I need to really start to unpack my inner child and this dollhouse is a perfect way to do that. And we started to conceptualize and go back and forth on different ideas of how we we're gonna do it. We started to go on YouTube and every single American Girl dollhouse video that is on YouTube right now, we watched maybe a hundred times. And we had a spreadsheet of all the things that we for sure wanted and a spreadsheet of all the things that we for sure did not want. I saw so many pack shells and through that I realized I wanted something more secure. I wanted something that was wall to wall, floor to floor, and something that was going to last time and all of the weight that I was planning on putting in it in regards to furniture, the amount of dolls I put into it. There were so many things that I had to research before we even started to build the actual house. Very early on, I knew that I had to do something massive. I had so many American Girl doll items that I truly was like, if this is going to be an American Girl doll house, it has to look like American Girl had it in the New York store. I wanted every single element of it to be American Girl. I didn't want it to be trendy. I did not want it to have very aesthetic pieces. I wanted you to be able to look into it and say, oh, this is a piece from this collection, or oh, this is this character's bed, or I just kept going on and on and saying, these are how my girls are going to be shaped. 
and this is all the stuff from American Girl that I'm going to utilize to create their backstories. Originally, I had gone to my father who immediately wanted to murder me because he knew that it was going to be a huge project and I had this idea of having it in the space up against my wall and still keeping my closet. But once we started to break ground on that, I realized that there was going to be a lot of elements that just didn't work with that. So once my brother-in-law Douglas came into the picture and decided to start helping, we came up with a completely different idea for the dollhouse. We completely decided to demolish my closet, which is honestly for the better. With the closet being gone, there was so much space for me to display my dolls up against that wall. And then the wall that previously had all of my American Girl dolls was now gonna be utilized for this dollhouse. When we started this process, the first thing I wanted was my good dear friend, Dolls of Art, to get involved. He is a fashion designer, so I reached out to him and I said, hey, so I'm conceptualizing my dollhouse right now. Is there any way I could possibly beg you to please make some original designs for each of my girls? And he said yes. And as you guys are looking at this dollhouse right now, I want you to take notice specifically of Elizabeth, Nikki, Kanani, and Piper, because he did create those outfits from scratch, from ideas that I gave him. I wanted them to be displayed in a original idea outfit that he had conceptualized. So let's start off with my first American Girl doll, Bailey. She had the biggest piece of furniture because I wanted you to be able to look at this dollhouse and say, okay, that is definitely the first girly. She has the biggest piece of furniture. She has the most attention to detail. Bailey was born in the 2000s, so why not make her a 2000s girly? From the Juicy Couture tracksuit, to all of the little elements on her dresser, to the actual Murphy bed itself, it just screams 2000s. And when we get posters and pictures and up, everything up on the wall, I know for sure she's going to have some Paris Hilton photos, maybe Lindsay Lohan's mugshot, who knows? But my baby girl definitely deserved the world for her being the first one. When we were thinking about Elizabeth, my original idea was Legally Blonde and her being a physical embodiment of Elle Woods. As we started to conceptualize her more and more, we realized that we wanted her to be kind of a Barbie slash Elle Woods slash influencer kind of doll. So her room is very bright. It's very pink. It is the girliest. In my world, she is an influencer. She definitely would have walked the Victoria's Secret model fashion show. She is just that girly and I had the most fun with her room. I think that it is the girliest out of all of them and I definitely, definitely cannot wait to add more to it because right now there is a little bit of the bare minimum, but we are definitely gonna keep going and adding more pink elements, maybe hang up some wings somewhere along the way. But all of the pieces in here definitely showcase that she is an influencer, a makeup guru. She just does it all. She's a lifestyle girl. So Nikki is very much a fashion girl. I loved the idea of that So Raven and I loved the idea of her having a passion for fashion. So we found Isabel's sewing studio and we based everything around her loving the color purple. She is definitely one of those girls that loves the color purple and makes it her personality trait. I definitely want to hang up more fashion stuff up on the walls, but she is someone that enjoys sewing, she enjoys making fashion, and Artie definitely took the note when I said I wanted her to be a fashion girly, because from what he's told me, a lot of girls from his school definitely wear the outfit that Nikki is wearing. I've seen one too many Disney girls in dollhouses, and a lot of them can come off really young, and the biggest thing with Molly is that I knew I wanted to have a Disney girl, but I did not want her to come off tacky in any way, shape, or form. Here are the things that we're gonna do and what we're not gonna do. Originally, I was gonna have her room painted red, and it was gonna be like the Mickey Mouse polka dots all over, and then I just realized that that's giving three-year-old, that's giving baby nursery, so I decided to keep the element of blue throughout her entire room because her favorite character is Stitch, just like me. So when we started to put things in, I definitely wanted to have a lot of Disney elements in there. And I wanted her outfit to be one of the original My Disney Girls that back in the day Disney used to sell. And that definitely tied everything together. I think she is a psychopathic Disney adult. And I hope that her room really showcases that. I gave her some pieces that kind of really evened her out, but for the most part, I wanted it to be something easy to look at and say, okay, she's a Disney freak. And I love that because that's also me. So when we were thinking about Kanani, I wanted someone that was very into earth and definitely someone that 
goes to animal shelters on the weekend and like helps out. I wanted someone very lighthearted. I wanted someone that very much is into nature, that loves going on hikes. And Kanani really just gives off that nature vibe. So I wanted her room to literally be crawling with plants. I wanted her to have fairy lights. I wanted her to have piano. She's very much into music. She's very spiritual and I, just loved every element of her room. Every time I find a little mini plant, I literally just added it into her room because she is that girl that makes buying plants her entire personality. And I just needed that. I feel like there needed to be a sense of balance between my girls and Kanani is definitely the most down to earth out of all of them. So Piper's a little weird. So Piper is my tarot card reading hippie girl. I. For the longest time we went on different ideas for Piper. She was very hard to kind of pin down what we were gonna do. Originally we were gonna make her like very goth and grungy. And then we thought about making her like this playboy bunny obsessed girl. And then we thought about making her just very mod and 60s. And then I was just like, let's just make her a hippie. But let's make her a hippie that isn't so in your face about being a hippie. She's still very down to earth, but she is someone that is very into tarot cards. She is a hippie that loves to wear long prairie skirts. Like she is just that entire vibe. In this room specifically, I wanted her to have one of those like wavy mirrors. I thought that was really cool. And her wallpaper for this is very her. And I wanted it to be bright and fun while still having that very hippie element to her. She has all these mushrooms around. She is the only one that has a refrigerator in her room because my girl loves to chow down. And in that refrigerator, she has all her favorite snacks. And she is someone that has a record player because she is definitely someone that enjoys listening to music on a record player. She is definitely someone that enjoys like just the older old fashioned things. And so giving her Courtney's TV was definitely a decision that I was like, this is going to help really bring out that she loves the old retro stuff. And also she has Trixie Mattel's records because she is a Trixie Mattel girly and she definitely loves to listen to Miss Trixie Mattel while she pigs out. So. That was something I needed Piper to have. I needed one of my girls to really be just in love with food. Right now there's no pictures up right now. I didn't want to start nailing things and taping things to the wall. This is definitely a first draft of what the living room is going to be like. I feel like the kitchen from American Girl was a perfect element of all their rooms and it definitely gives off this Hannah Montana vibe, which I wanted. When I looked at the living room and the way we started to design it, I was like, okay, I want to have a living room that is bright, that is colorful. They have a bar cart because my girls are over 21. I wanted them to have a bar cart. I thought that was important to really showcase that they are not children, that they are grown adults. And I really wanted elements that were from my own home. There was an acrylic table on there with magazines. And right now there is a Christmas tree because it is decorated for the holiday season. This was really the room that I love. And anytime someone comes to look at the house and when it was being built, the living room was definitely a piece that everyone was looking at because it was just such a huge piece. My brother-in-law Douglas, when he actually was building this, he laid inside of it. It can hold more than 300 pounds. Not that he's 300 pounds, but it definitely can hold more than 300 pounds. I have recently found Caroline's Parlor at Girl Again and I just knew for a fact that I didn't want it to sit on the floor anymore. So the dining room is a piece of area that my girls don't really go into. It's kind of too fancy for them to want to mess up. So there's just a cake in there, a nice little display cake and some pieces and no one really goes in it. So my girls kind of avoid it like the plague. <laughs> in regards to the bathroom, we went around a lot of ideas of whether or not we even really needed one, but I didn't want my girls to come off like they didn't shower and that they didn't um, need one. So we went around a couple of ideas and then our generation released their new shower and I was like, ugh, I need to get it. And then we have purchased Julie's vanity and her whole set. So I was like, okay, great, I have a toilet. But then we also had purchased the My Life As set. So we were like, let's keep that. And then we bought the washer and dryer from My Life As. And we ended up with this really cute yellow, pink, orange bathroom. And somehow it magically worked. I love it. I have a lot of dolls displayed in there, either one doing laundry or whatever. But for the most part, it definitely is a room that I didn't really think I needed, but now that I have it, I'm really glad that I have it because my girls need to shower, you know? I definitely want to say at the end of this that in no way, shape or form am I trying to brag, 
with this dollhouse whatsoever. I really do have to take a moment every time that I'm back at my parents' house and take a step back and really appreciate the amount of work, the amount of effort, the amount of time that was put into this dollhouse. My brother-in-law Douglas literally travels two hours to help with the dollhouse. My dad, he, you know, helped so much with this dollhouse. My parents, my friends got involved. There was a point where I was just so micromanaging with everything that everyone definitely wanted to murder me. But I'm so grateful, truly, for my father and my brother-in-law Douglas for really getting in there and building this dollhouse that is not moving, it's not going anywhere. And it really helped me heal a part of me that I didn't know I needed to have healed. And now that I have this dollhouse fully finished, I can look back and I think that little nine-year-old, 10-year-old Chris would be over the moon excited because growing up he had Oh, no furniture for his American Girl dolls. I remember my dolls had a stove that was made out of a Nike box. They had a house that was made out of a cardboard TV box. And I remember the only clothes that they had were the clothes that they came with and they would just mix and match with each other. And I remember the last time I was at my parents' house, I really took a moment to walk back and just look at it with its lights on and just really thought about the fact that nine-year-old, 10-year-old Chris would be absolutely in disbelief that it even got made. And he's not dead or anything, he's me. But I definitely think that he would be really, really happy with the way that everything came out. I definitely wanna say that there is power in reclaiming your childhood if you feel like you missed out on anything. I would definitely recommend going back into your childhood and any little moments, no matter how big or how small, it's never too late to reclaim it. And honestly, looking at this dollhouse, I'm so happy that I did. And, and I definitely feel a sense of empowerment getting to share this very personal thing with you guys. I am always open and honest with you guys. So I definitely wanted to share with you guys something that hopefully empowers you guys to go out and do the things you never maybe got the chance to do. And hopefully you find joy in that. And again, it really truly is never too late to tap back into your inner child and just have fun with it and reclaim that and find empowerment in it. And hopefully you do. I just wanna say again, thank you to every single person that was involved, specifically my father and specifically my brother-in-law Douglas for helming this project and for really going in there and breaking your back and building this massive contraption. I think it's literally like nine feet by six feet or six feet by nine feet. I don't know how tall it is, but I know that it is wall to wall, ceiling to floor. It's massive and it can hold, it's gonna hold some furniture for quite a while. <laughs> so I definitely am very grateful for them. I wanna thank my creative assistant and my creative director for helping me paint. I wanna thank my creative designer for helping me conceptualize all of these rooms before we even hit ground on them. I just, again, am in awe. I mean, I have a little switch on the side of the dollhouse that is literally to turn on the lights because those puck lights are awful. But yeah, every element of this dollhouse I'm very happy with and I know that it is still at its beginning stage, but with the new year around the corner, I just want to share it with you guys at its first stage and hopefully every year we get to touch base on the dollhouse and where my girls are at. So thank you so much. Also, huge shout out to Dolls of Art, Artie. All of his outfits are fierce and amazing. And if you ever want to get anything done by him, go check out his Instagram, Dolls of Art. He is definitely someone that has amazing work and you definitely should go support him on his Instagram, his girls, all of that. So definitely go check him out. All right, you guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. My name is Chris. You guys can follow me on my Instagram. It's at the Doll Studio by Chris. Make sure you guys subscribe to my channel. Make sure you guys like this video. Comment down below and let me know what your favorite room is. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.